Hi everyone, it's Paul, W2PAK. If you haven't had a QSilver satellite, you should try it. It's inexpensive and it's a lot of fun. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you what app to get, what equipment to buy, what the format of the QSO is. I'm even gonna show you how to log a QSO properly. Come join me. The most important part of the process is planning. Where are the satellites and what are the frequencies? I use an app called GoSat Watch. So I opened up GoSat Watch. I'm using version 5.3. The most important thing to do is to set up, of course, the satellites. You can choose the satellites. You can choose the International Space Station. And then there's a whole variety of satellites that you can choose from. These are all the amateur satellites. And uh, I chose the ones that are essentially FM repeaters on a satellite. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the location. And then if you go under preferences, it's really important to select the minimum elevation. I chose 40. So what that means is if the satellite is below 40 degrees, I'm not going to even see it. I also selected pass orbits at zero and next orbits at one. And it gives me a really nice, concise list of the satellites that are going to be uh, passing over. And here's a good example. So this is on September 16, 2024. This is the list. And you can see if you go to a satellite and select, say, AO27 and click the I, it gives you some information. I like n2y0.com. If you select the link, it will give you all kinds of information, including the frequencies. So the downlink is the frequency that you will be receiving on, and the uplink is the frequency that you'll be transmitting on. And don't forget to select the tone as well. I like this app because it shows me the passes in real time. So this is an example of the ISS, which didn't show up on my list because it's less than 40 degrees, but you can see if I change the position of my iPhone, it shows me where the heading is. And so I usually hold my antenna, I hold, hold the iPhone, and I go back and forth until it's centered. And that's when I know I'm in the right direction. Usually the next place I go is amset.org. You can see this is a great summary of all the satellites that are available. It shows you the status of each one. If it's blue, then it's active. It's, if it's red, there was no signal. And you see there's one, one, two, one, three. That means one person reported it active, one person or three people reported it um, active here on the ISS. Now, if we want information, for instance, about the ISS, I click on this. And here I can see that um, it's configured, it's active. And here I have the uplink and the downlink. So again, the uplink is the frequency that you're transmitting on, and the downlink is the frequency that you're receiving on. Don't forget the tone. The PL here is 67. This is a great resource, and um, I use it all the time to figure out, is it, is it worth my uh, bother to go out and look for this satellite or not? The first thing we need to choose is an antenna, and this is the arrow antenna. Basically, it is a 2-meter Yagi and a 70-centimeter Yagi, 90 degrees to each other. There's a duplexer that combines these signals. Uh, there are different options here. It's somewhere between $140 and $200 uh, for the antenna. The second antenna people use a lot is the elk antenna, which is a uh, log periodic antenna uh, between 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Also about the same price range. Uh, the last antenna uh, that uh, you might want to consider is uh, the Moxon Yagi antenna that I built. I'll put a link in the description. And um, that, including the transceiver, costs less than $100. The nice thing about that antenna, like the Elk antenna, you do not need a duplexer. In terms of transceivers, I chose this 10-watt uh, Biofang UV16R. The reason I chose it is that um, it's 10 watts. It's very inexpensive. And um, it works pretty well. You can also buy a full duplex uh, transceiver. This is a fairly inexpensive uh, transceiver. It's also 10 watts. The nice thing about a full duplex is if you're talking, you can also hear yourself echoed 
uh, from the satellite because basically you're uplinking in one frequency, downlinking on the other frequency, and you can actually hear yourself. So it's handy, but not necessary. If you want an upgrade, this is an option. There are other more expensive transceivers, of course, that you could buy, uh, but this is an option that I've seen used and it seems to work really well. Okay, so here's a good guideline for a satellite QSO format. You do not call CQ, you do not give a signal report. This is a good example of a QSO. So let's say I'm going to be calling over a satellite. I would say Whiskey 2, Papa Alpha Kilo, Fox Mike 1-9. Fox Mike 1-9 is my grid square. Look it up. It's very simple to find. The answering station, so let's say W1AAA heard my call. That station would say W2PAK. This is Whiskey 1, Alpha, Alpha, Alpha. Foxtrot Nancy 75. I would answer in return something like Whiskey 1 Alpha Alpha Alpha. This is Whiskey 2 Papa Alpha Kilo QSL. Basically acknowledging that I heard that you came back to me. And finally, the other station would say Whiskey 2 Papa Alpha Kilo. This is Whiskey 1 Alpha 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 QSL 73. And that is the end of the QSO. There are a lot of people on these satellites. We want to make it very, very short. The last thing I want to say, which has nothing to do with the format, is that I open the squelch on my transceiver. These signals are fairly low, and they don't always break through the squelch. So that's how I do it. I keep the squelch open. All right, we're going to go outside. We're going to try to make a QSO. Well, we're finally going to be contacting a satellite. This is my Moxon Yagi antenna, 2 meters, 70 centimeters. This is the UV-16. 10 watt transceiver. This whole thing is less than three feet tall. It's uh, less than $100 to make. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is polarization. So the signals coming down from the satellite are polarized in, in different angles. You're gonna see me moving the antenna back and forth like this to try to maximize the RSSI. And uh, the nice thing about this antenna is that the two meter and the 70 centimeter uh, antennas are in the same polar plane. The second thing I want to talk about is on my phone, I always have a recording app. It can be, get really confusing to memorize the call signs that are coming in. Uh, so I just record the entire QSO sessions. And then uh, when I log it, I go back and I listen to it and make sure I have the right call signs, etc. The last thing I want to talk to you about is Doppler. So there is a Doppler shift. Uh, the Doppler shift is as soon as it hits the horizon, and, uh, you know, with, with, when it hits the next horizon, the thing is that I've really, I've really not been able to control the frequency uh, that well during the queue. So there's just so much going on. But more importantly, I really haven't found a need to do so. So for now, I would ignore it. This is your first queue. So don't worry about it. You might have to worry about it later as you get more advanced. There, are, there is equipment that will do that. For now, don't worry about it. The satellite's coming in in about five minutes. I'll be back. We'll see how this is done. Whiskey 2, Papa Alpha Kilo, handheld, Fox Mike 1-8. PAK WA1JY Fox Mike 05. Roger, Roger. Fox Mike 18. 73's QSL. 73. Alpha Charlie So that's how it's done. Uh, that was the ISS. It's a little chaotic. I left it on so you guys can listen to it. Let's go log it. The last thing I want to show you is how I log a QSO. I use uh, Log for Old Man. It's similar for any of these logging uh, programs. So this is a QSO I had with N2FYA. I go to um, Q the satellite mode and select. Uh, this was the this was on uh, SO. Uh, 50. Uh, make sure to select uh, satellite mode 
mode VU. I'm going to put in the uplink frequency and then the downlink frequency. And then the band in this case is going to be two meters. Uh, you can only choose one band in, in this program. And I log the queue. So the nice thing about uh, this logging program is it will upload it to QRZ and uh, Logbook of the World automatically. And it's that simple. So there you have it. It's really easy. It's really fun. I hope one day we have a QSO together. That would be really fun. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe. 73 is my friends.